Welcome back to Upfront. Milwaukee City leaders are looking to put the brakes on reckless driving. A recent string of hit and runs have brought serious new attention to the problem. Since late October, four separate hit and runs have killed two children and hurt eight other people. A task force has spent much of the past year studying reckless driving and carjackings. It's offering recommendations, and we're talking about that now with Milwaukee Alderman Michael Murphy. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. So I've been looking through all of these recommendations here. I mean, we have 27 pages. What sticks out to you the most? What do you want to get done first? Well, we have a comprehensive list. We decided to break it down to three key areas. We broke it into enforceability and accountability, engineering solutions and prevention and education. We realize the problem that we have today in Milwaukee is going to take a multi-dimensional approach to trying to solve this problem. So certainly looking at in terms of engineering solutions, we're looking at putting roads on diet diets by narrowing the roadways, making it much more pedestrian and friendly. Um, education and prevention is key, so we're looking at changing our messaging and who we are targeting in terms of different demographics for younger people versus older people. And then for enforceability and accountability, we're looking at working with the court system, restorative justice, um, victim impact statements for people who have been injured, um, meeting the, the, the defendant. Um, we're looking at a multi-approach because we recognize getting out of this problem is going to be working all collaboratively together. There are so many interesting things in here. I mean, even red light cameras to a video game app for safe driving skills. And I know this concentrates on carjacking and reckless driving. Did you find anything about hit and runs? I mean, what is going on with that problem recently? You know, it's very interesting. Um, you know, for 10 years, Milwaukee Public Schools didn't provide any type of driver education. And I, I do think that it had an impact in terms of many drivers we have in the city have never had any proper driver education. And we have thousands of people driving with a suspended revoked driver license in our city. So I'm pleased to tell you that all 16 high schools in MPS now provide driver's education. And so that'll take some time, I think, to provide um, people the skills that they need to have on the roadway. But certainly, I think the other problem that drove it was the police chief's policy that had no chase. I think that encouraged people that were reckless in the first place, just chose to drive anyway because they know the police weren't going to chase them anyway. And now we've reversed that policy and now we are chasing and that message perhaps hasn't gotten through some of the people knowing that. So I'm interested, what did you find in your research? I mean, did you compare Milwaukee's reckless driving problem to anywhere else? Is it bigger here? We hear about it all the time. You know, we compared it looking at other cities for solutions and best practices. Um, other cities are experiencing some somewhat similar, but not to the degree we're facing. I mean, we truly, I believe, it's almost like an epidemic. I mean, everyone I know, uh, we all drive through the streets every day. We see people just terribly recklessly driving. Um, but it's not just the ones you see in the newscast that we've just seen a terrible um, loss of life. But, you know, we did a study just on people on Holly Road, and 90% of the people were speeding, 90%. So all of us have an obligation to look at what we're doing in terms of not having distracted driving, not looking at our phones and slowing down. Um, I think that's one of the realities we're facing. These hit and runs recently have been just devastating. Yeah. Two little girls killed. But these recommendations cost money. I mean, we know there needs to be a change, but it costs money. How do you, how do you get that? Yeah, so in this year's budget, we did allocate about $1.2 million to just improving the physical infrastructure of the city streets. But in addition, we also put some additional funding for special need projects that come out of the task force from ideas from citizens. For example, we've had one listening session. We'll have another one on the 25th of November at Rufus King High School at 6 p.m. We want the public's involvement. We want their engagement because we need their help. Um, we need them to report people who are driving recklessly, but we need their ideas and suggestions to make our city safer. And what about the state? I know the, the right. mayor wants some help from the state. We have. We've petitioned the state for some assistance because um, we recognize we can't do it alone. And we have very challenging budgets in the city of Milwaukee. Obviously, that's one of the problems. Enforcement is certainly one aspect of it um, in accountability and uh, the courts working with this, uh, the defendants. But also the other approaches that we're looking at hopefully will have a um, material impact in making a difference. Has there been any update on that in terms of if the state will provide some money? You know, I, I, I be honest with you, I am not real optimistic. Um, this state has not been what you call uh, favorably disposed to the city of Milwaukee. And why do you think that is when it comes to something like this? You know, I, I don't want to get into the, you know, we have so much division in our state already with politics. Um, 
I, I have my ideas, but I, let me just say this. I, I, I hope outside state legislators recognize, um, you know, as the city goes, so does the state. And I hope they recognize they want to see an improvement in our state, the largest city in the state, and that they recognize that maybe they should provide some additional help. And I'm not going to lose complete hope, but, you know, that's the way it is. And one more listening session coming up here soon. What did, what did you learn from the one you just had last week? Well, we had some really thoughtful, very in, in, insightful ideas about people, how we want to target young people in terms of engaging them in terms of finding solutions and changing their behavior. I mean, the whole goal of this task force is really very simple. We want to change people's behavior because the current behavior is just simply unacceptable. And different ways to do that as to how we're trying to approach it. So the public has given some really thoughtful ideas, unique ideas on how to try and go and attack that problem. And we're going to be looking at implementing them in the coming year. Okay. Alderman Murphy, thank you for your time. Thank you. Republican State Senator Chris Kappinga of Delafield is taking a pass on running for the 5th Congressional District. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, reports that Kappinga will look at leadership opportunities within the state. That leaves Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald as the only declared Republican in the 5th District race. You can follow it on the election blog at WISPolitics.com. Coming up next, skills for the future. Our Matt Smith reports on efforts to get computer science into more schools and increase diversity in the field. Thank you.